Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Jesus Name Ministries. Um, as uh, I had uh, told you all that uh, we'll be getting back to the live stream. Um, and uh, so this we are. And today we wanted to talk about uh, leaving the old law behind to find Jesus. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Leaving the old law behind to find Jesus. And uh, so anyhow, we just wanted to kind of just preface that to we'll talk about the old law. The old law is found uh, when Moses uh, had went up to the Mount Sinai when he had went up to get the law from God. And uh, anyhow, he went up and brought down the uh, two tablets, and uh, which is what we know as the Ten Commandments. And uh, with that Ten Commandments, uh, most of you are aware of that, and you can find those in Deuteronomy. Um, you can look that up on Google, whatever your search engine is. Uh, anyhow, you can find those, and uh, you can uh, look at those, and you could go through uh, Leviticus. You can find the the Jewish law of their their eating habits and and all the details that that God had give them for um, what their dietary laws are and things of that sort. Uh, but anyhow, those those are for the Jews. And when Jesus came along, and I'm going to just quickly run through this, and I, I, I don't want to um, go into a full study with this because we won't have time to get to what we're uh, talking about today. Uh, but it does tie into this. But uh, the law of Moses, the law, the Levitical priesthood, um, and the tabernacle plan... Uh, as of old, and the the Jewish, by the time Jesus came on the scene, you will find that that what was being taught in the synagogues and the temples of that day was the old law, and and Jesus grew up under the old law, and you will find that when Jesus began his ministry. At around 30 years old, um, you will find that it all changed. It was all in the transformation period that Jesus began to develop and began to show. And you find that John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, had come along to prepare the way of the Lord. And this Messiah that was foretold in the prophets of old is now on the scene and has grown up as the tender plant that was prophesied of old is now growing up among them. And you will find that this is he of whom they spoke of. And as John uh, had inquired as he was in prison, is this he, or do we seek another? And Jesus sent back his uh, messengers and said, hey, you tell John the blind are seeing again, the lame are walking again, the miracles are happening. And John knew that it was the Messiah. This was the Jesus. This was the miracle worker. And so he knew that this was the Messiah. That's all Jesus needed to say. He did not need to say that I am the I am, but he, all he had to do was say, this is the person that is causing the blind to see again, the lame to walk again. These miracles are now happening. Now is the day of that atonement. This is the day that you've been waiting for. And this is the day that has been prophesied, the days of old has come to pass. This is that which it was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, amen, that the, the new spirit, the new and living way is here. 
And when Jesus was speaking in the, uh, the temple, he had told them, he got up to read Isaiah and, and talking about the prophecy. And he said, this today, this scripture today is fulfilled in your ears. And he, when he read that, it was the prophecy of the Messiah to come. And he sat down after he read it and he said, this today has been fulfilled in your ears. In other words, I am here. This is now. And I am invoking the prophecy right now. All right. So as we look the law and as I have talked about, this changes everything. Jesus changes everything. Jesus changed it all. The law is over with Jesus coming on the scene, with Jesus' death, with Jesus being the testator. Jesus' will, amen, has changed everything. This is the new and the living way, leaving the old law behind to find Jesus. You cannot follow Jesus and you cannot live by the law. You will lose Jesus if you're living the law. You cannot have them both. You cannot live part of the law and part of Jesus. It does not work. You cannot put new wine in an old bottle. It will break. It will not. The oil and water will not mix. This is the new wine, the new and living way. This is the way of Jesus. He said, come, follow me. You must leave the law of Moses to find the new way of Jesus. Jesus did not show up in the Sanhedrin courtroom. He did not call a solemn assembly. He did not read, uh, make a meeting with the Sanhedrin court. He did not pull in the high priest of that day. He did not pull in the, the scribes and the Pharisees. He did not bring together a great grand council and say, listen, I am the guy. I am the Messiah. You must follow me now. This is the change. This is the fulfillment outside of him going to the temple, reading Isaiah, and saying, today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears, which they would not. And that was prophesied as well, that they would not hear him. They would not listen. And has he had constantly warned them and told them that they must convert that they must follow him and they decided not to and they had heaped the coals upon their own head they had chosen to crucify him they had chosen the thief over him they have chosen death over life they have chosen not to follow jesus so this is where we are, and when we look in the scriptures, we are going to talk a little bit about that today. And uh, so I just want to bring that to your attention today, and let's go here today, and let's look at the transfiguration. And it says in Matthew 17, we look, Peter and James and John his brother, led them up a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun so imagine a projection a projector a hologram if you will a transfiguration and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light and behold there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him and Peter said to Jesus 
Lord, it's good that we're here. I'm glad we're getting to see this. If you wish, I'll make three tents here. One for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And the voice from the cloud said, and I'm repeating that, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. Now, if you had heard out of nowhere a deep, thunderous sounding voice coming from the clouds, from the heavens, speaking this, what would you do? What would your reaction be? I would say that it probably would mimic very closely to what happened here. You might be very terrified. You may fall on your face as well, realizing that it might be the voice of God himself. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. What did we just witness here in the verbiage of Scripture? What we witnessed here was that we have removed, God himself has removed all doubt of those that would still want to follow Moses or still want to attach themselves to Elijah who would still want to attach themselves to the law that that has just before their eyes and those men once of God have just vanished away and one was left and that was Jesus only. I don't know how much clearer that could become for you or the now religious world. I don't know how religion misses that. I don't know how Catholicism misses that. I don't know how we still have ordinances of the law. I don't know how we still have a church building. I don't know how we still have remnants and full on, not just remnants, but full-on cathedrals, altars, baptisms, the sprinkling, the sprinkling of water, the sprinkling of blood, the calling down of a once crucified Savior to be crucified yet again under a priesthood. How do we set up graven images? How do we count a rosary? How do we pray to Mary? How do we, how do we serve graven images? Such as Moses and Elijah. All right. Let's go to another one. Luke 
Luke 7, 20 through 28. Behold, a greater than Elias. And, and if you don't understand, this is talking about Elijah. And it says, Art thou he that should come? And this, this here, again, I, I preface this about John. And let's, let's, let's continue reading. Or look we for another. And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? And if you're wondering what that, <laughs> that ghostly image there is, it is actually my microphone there that uh, seems to be getting... Uh, kind of map, mapped out there. Let me uh, show you what I'm talking about here. So that that image, background image, is actually my microphone there that's been getting mapped out So uh, into the background. So that's what that was. And there it goes again. But anyhow, there it is. But anyhow, what went ye out into the wilderness for to see? And this is something I want to focus on here. What are you looking for, Jesus said? What were you looking for? And, and, and we talked about a little bit today. Uh, we posted on Facebook today. Of all the jingles and all the bells and whistles and all the things that people what religion has to offer today, the, 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 the goal, the, the, you know, just like back when Moses came down from the, from the mountain with the, with the plaques to find Aaron and the golden calf and the people just heathenistically worshiping the calf. All the gold and the glitter and the, the, the vile sexual partying drunkenness given over to the flesh. And, and you know, these are extremes, but it doesn't have to be extreme to be extreme. You see, we are enticed. And, and this, is, this is what's told in the scripture, that we are led away and enticed by our own desires. We are led into sin by our own desires. We are led away from Christ. And, and, and we talked about this morning about James talking about these same people that we are attracted to are the same people who make fun of us, who disgrace, who disgrace and degrade that worthy name of Jesus. You see, they have a plastic Jesus, the one that sets on their dash in their car. And really, the bobblehead Jesus. Really, the golden calf Jesus. The Egypt Jesus. That's the Jesus that they worship. They worship the material Jesus. The golden chandelier Jesus. The ladies' auxiliary Jesus. 
That's the Jesus that they're worshiping today. The Jesus that they lift and esteem is the pastoral committee Jesus. The great evangelist Jesus. The hierarchical Jesus. You know, when, when Samuel told the Lord that, you know, they want a king. They want someone they could see, that they can, they can manipulate. They want a man. They don't want the voice of God in their life anymore. They don't want to know you, God. They don't want you to speak directly. They don't want the spirit. But they want a man that can be persuaded that is passionate by the same things that lure them. Someone they could buy, someone that they could influence. You see, they're, they're wanting that power that this world offers. They're not looking for the spiritual. They're not looking for the heavenly. They're not looking for the life to come. They're looking for the now. They're looking for the desires of their lust. And they have not because they ask not, because they ask amiss. To consume by their own lust. They want to give until you hurt committees. They want to travel around the world evangelist committees. They want the building fund committees. They want the get together campfire committees. They want the ice cream social committees. You see, they're not after the poor. They're not after telling people about Jesus. They're not after helping the person that got hurt. You see, they're not wanting to do the work of the Good Samaritan. That's the dirty work. We would rather, ladies, find the prettiest dress and put the just on the verge of the ornamental hats and dresses and go to the conferences and be the most just to the edge, prettiest and most attractive trinket at the conference. You see, that's what we're after today. That's what these organizations are luring you into. And that's why I say that they are not good because this is what they offer it's the world but no they talk a different story but what the message is what the real underlying message is is just that you see it's all about growing the beast feeding the beast their message is, is growing the business. You see, that's the underlying message. It's feeding the beast. See, these organizations cannot exist without your resources. It's not about Jesus. It's not about people finding Jesus. It's about you 
giving your resources to them in the name of Jesus, in the name of helping the kingdom, the switcheroo is helping them, patting their pockets, making their prestige, adding golden chandeliers and, and, and all the money to their coffers, growing their buildings, buying their land, sending their evangelists, buying their $8,000 suits, having the latest and greatest musical equipment that they could put on a better Hollywood show to then attract more worldly people, all in the name of growing the kingdom of God. Just to convert another twofold child of hell more than they themselves. Let's continue. What went you out into the wilderness to find? What were you looking for? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously appareled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of a woman, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. What did you think was going to come? Who were you looking for? The Messiah came lowly, riding on a donkey. As a servant, one who would pick out 12 men, not rich men, not great men, not high men, not knowledgeable in, in any fashion of, of, of people that would stick out. Matter of fact, most considered them unlearned and ignorant. But as James said, we go out and we look and we want to attach ourselves to those that are arrogant. Those that put down that magnificent and worthy name by which we're even called. That's who we want to be friends with. Oh, let me let me get the license. Let me let me let me have the the degrees. Oh, I got to be part of that. I, I, I need to have this license. I got to have this degree to, to do God's work. That's your excuse. That's your excuse. I'm pretty sure that when God chose Moses, the man said, I can't even speak, Lord. Why would you choose me? Why? Choose someone else. I'm not even an eloquent speaker. Why don't you choose someone that can speak better than me? God chooses those that can't. Because you see, those that can would put more emphasis on that they did it and not give God the glory. 
He has chosen the low of this world to confound the wise. And that's what James says. Don't, don't look at a person with, with vile raiment and the one with costly array when they come into your presence and think that the one with costly array is more important or give them special treatment because you have become judges of evil. Love your brother as yourself, your neighbor, and you do well. I'm going to end this here. Looking forward to Jesus. You won't find Jesus in the law. It will lead you to Jesus, but you've got to leave the law to find Jesus. God bless you. Amen. I hope that this was encouraging to you. I hope that you have been able to understand and see that this is something that you must do. You have to. And again, I admonish you. I encourage you to read Acts 15. You will find I believe it's in verse 9, 10, where Peter said, our fathers and we ourselves couldn't even obey the law. And why would we tell the Gentiles to adhere to the law? All right, God bless you. God go with you and be with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.